Before we continue with the rest of the video, we could use your help. Click that like button to help spread the word about Watch Jojo, and also be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss our future videos. This family escaped their burning town, yet what dawned on dad in the car is heartbreaking. A brush with death can change your entire outlook on life. Case in point right here. What this father and husband realized after escaping the massive fire that engulfed Fort McMurray in May of 2016 is both heartbreaking and inspiring at the same time. John Craig McIsaac moved to Fort McMurray back in 2008. Situated in northern Alberta, the city is known as Canada's biggest boomtown, having gone through rapid economic and population growth thanks to the discovery of precious natural resources nearby. Like so many others, McIsaac arrived at Fort McHenry with the intention of making a quick buck before returning home. After all, the city boasts some of the highest incomes in all of Canada because of its location near the massive Athabasca oil sand deposits. McIsaac, by his own admission, expected to find a city with no sense of community. But contrary to what he'd heard about the place, he discovered that Fort Mac had a genuine small town feel and was full of very friendly people. So friendly, in fact, that before long, he'd met his future wife and started a family. It was here that eight years later, McIsaac and his family would face the biggest test of their lives. Like everyone else living in Fort McMurray, they would have to flee the city as a massive fire rapidly approached. Alberta is certainly no stranger to natural disasters, with various ice storms, thunderstorms, and periods of high winds combining to make the province the most disaster prone in Canada. But the fire that began southwest of Fort McMurray on May 1, 2016 would quickly grow to become the costliest natural disaster in the country's history. Despite being identified by fire crews when it only covered a mere five acres, the fire could not be subdued. It was more than 30 times larger after only two hours. Over the next two days, firefighters fought day and night to prevent the blaze from moving eastward toward the southern portions of the city. But the fire expanded westward and managed to cross Athabasca River, threatening Fort McMurray's northern areas. A day later, it had grown so large that it became impossible to hold off its advance on the city from any direction. Whereas only parts of the city were evacuated up to this point, by 6 p.m. on May 3rd, all of Fort McMurray was put on compulsory evacuation notice. And like most families, the McIsaacs hastily fled northward along the only major road of the city, Highway 63. Miraculously, 88,000 residents of the city and nearby areas managed to escape without any injuries or deaths. Like many other evacuees, McIsaac and his family took temporary refuge at one of the work camps north of the city. With his family safe at last, McIsaac decided to share his thoughts about the ordeal on Facebook. Yet he had absolutely no idea how much his words would resonate with other residents of the city, and indeed the rest of the world. In an emotional post, McIsaac described how the realization that material possessions don't matter hit him when he was trying to decide what items to take as they were leaving the house. I tried to decide what was important enough to take, and the answer was nothing. Nothing mattered except my family. That notion was only strengthened when the family's escape was blocked by flames that had reached the highway. McIsaac recounted that he felt a terrible fear at the thought of being unable to save his loved ones. But despite the harrowing experience, McIsaac said he wasn't looking for sympathy. Instead, he used the opportunity to encourage others to appreciate their loved ones because, in the end, everything else is bullshit. It doesn't matter. McIsaac continued by commending the toughness, hard work, and compassion of the city's inhabitants, emergency workers, and everyone else involved in helping people escape and cope with the disaster. He said that it gave him hope that people are better than we think. The father of two ended with a message of resilience. Having experienced just how strong the city's community is, he wrote that there's no doubt the residents will come together to rebuild Fort McMurray, much like the town itself has built us and our families. Thankfully for McIsaac and other inhabitants of Fort McMurray, the wildlife destroyed only about 2,400 buildings, 15% of the city. Although some neighborhoods, such as Waterways and Beacon Hill, were almost entirely wiped out, most of the city survived. The fire was so enormous, in fact, that firefighters dubbed it the beast. As one wildlife expert noted, the last time we've seen anything like this was in the 2001 Chisholm Fire, which is the most intense fire that we've recorded in the fire record, not just for Alberta, but for Canada and for the world.
According to the region's fire chief half the city might have been lost if it weren't for the efforts of his firefighters he also told reporters that he had never seen a fire like this in his career and that its unique behavior will change the way emergency personnel respond to future disasters. The fire will continue to rage on for weeks or even months in nearby forested areas, but despite the devastation, hundreds of workers are already repairing infrastructure and residents will soon be allowed to return to Fort McMurray. The community spirit McIsaac wrote about on his Facebook page will be needed more than ever as the town recovers and rebuilds. Please don't forget to subscribe and activate the bell to receive everything that's new.